the heart goes out to all of you. After having just stood there for half an hour, or stood there for half an hour listening to five press conferences, you'll be confused what to write. So my heart goes out to you. <laughs> um, but uh, we have our work to do and you have your work to do. So let's go. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar, yesterday, uh, the Malaysian Human Rights Commission, Suhaka, uh, Malaysian Human Rights, Human Rights Commission, Suhaka, came out with a four-page four uh, press release, a four-page press release on their probe or their investigation of uh, the death of Bala Murgan in custody in the Klang or North Klang police station. It is quite clear, and just as a background, just to inform you, that uh, Bala Murgan was detained on the evening of 6th February 2017. He was brought to court on 7th February 2017, and he died later on, later in the same evening, on, 2000, on, 6th, on 7th February 2017. So uh, he, was brought court, he was brought to court in the morning, and then he died on the same day, on 7th February 2017. He died, uh, what we could now call, death in custody. Now, reading this document, reading this four-page document, clearly tells us uh, that Suha Kam uh, spoke, clearly says, the death of Balamurgan is was caused by the police. It's very clear. There is no if and maybe uh, and maybe not and so on and so forth. They have squarely put the responsibility of Balamurgan's death in custody on the police. They are very very clear on that. Um, in fact, the investigation. If you look at the, the investigation, it says that there was a clear evidence of torture clear evidence of torture, clear evidence of unlawful detention, and a clear evidence of denial of urgent medical attention. So all these three elements contributed to his death. Contributed to his death. Uh, and what is also clear is that in this report, it says that you are dealing with a sick man. The police knew he was sick. The police knew he was sick uh, because when he went to court, he actually had vomited in court. So the magistrate actually knew he was sick and he was ordered to be taken to the hospital and to be released from custody. In fact, if you look at the first page of the uh, Swakam's report, uh, this is the magistrate saying, this is the magistrate saying that uh, the deceased had a swollen face and eyes and was unable to sit up or stand or even hold up his head up when his name was called in court. Uh, and he had a fear of vomiting as well. So he was a sick man and the magistrate knew that. But unfortunately the police decided to take him back. Uh, take him back to the police station as opposed to the uh, hospital. Now, uh, the point that I want to make here, and then I will be explain with this, okay, is that the police are behaving with impunity. The police are behaving with impunity. We have had 1,600 uh, and 58 cases since 2010. And you add another four this year, uh, that turn, and nobody has been charged in court this, all this time. There has been dead bodies, but no perpetrators. So we have a case where the police have act with impunity and no accountability. So I think this report is timely. It's timely, and it now calls upon the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Minister of Home Affairs, to file charges against the police who are involved in this particular case. And uh, I actually made a recommendation that a special prosecutor should be appointed. A special prosecutor should be appointed to manage this case, uh, <coughs> even when there is conflict of interest within the police uh, as well as the agency chambers. Now, my last point, and the point that I want to emphasize here, is that the police cannot act with impunity. They are accountable just like every other uh, enforce enforcement authority in Malaysia. But in this case, Bala Bumil's case is so clear, so clear that he was detained unlawfully. He was detained unlawfully, he was tortured, and he died as a result of the torture. So, and this report is very, very clear. There is also another report, which is a much more thicker report, and that report will be given to the various authorities. But the summation of the report is in these four pages. Uh, and therefore, I have to call upon the Minister of Home Affairs uh, to actually instruct the Attorney General to uh, 
suspend and bring to court the police officers involved in the death of the yeah, I just want to say that the Swakam statement actually clearly supports what we have been saying uh, from the moment the Balang uh, death in custody occurred. We said it then that this was a assault, a serious assault upon Balang Mugdun which caused his death. We, at that point of time, as lawyers, we called for the police to classify the case as murder. And we asked for immediate action. That is, suspend invest, immediate investigation by independent uh, team. Uh, suspension, uh, arrest, and prosecution. And despite the fact that the post-mortem report is very clear in saying that he was assaulted, so there's no two ways about it. He was in police custody, the doctors and the pathologists say he was assaulted. It's black and white scientific evidence. So the question for Dato Zahe and, and the IGP to answer now is, if that is the case, why has no Nobody been either suspended, arrested, or charged until today. It has been what now? 50 days? At least about 50 days since the death. One would have thought by now they would have moved and moved quickly in order to uh, bring back public confidence in the police force. But the opposite seems to be happening and they have become completely quiet about it right now. The Home Minister gives answers in the, in the Parliament on death in custody, so many MPs have asked, all talking about the procedure. We know the procedure. We are not interested in the procedure. We want to know what are you going to do about this death in custody. We never get that answer. So I would uh, urge the Home Minister, he's got to answer now. Home Minister must now answer what have you done in the past uh, almost 50 days since the death of Baran Morgan and why have you not uh, ensured that those guilty are apprehended and charges brought against them. In fact, uh, in the question, urgent question, uh, the Home Affairs Minister replied uh, on the issue of Baran Morgan. Uh, he said the government uh, will not start the committee, but they will allow the EAIC to investigate as well as SOAKAM to investigate. That's what he said. Now SOAKAM has done the investigation and they have squarely said, very clearly said, beautifully he said that the responsibility lies with the police. Police, the police behavior contributed to his death. Very, very clear. So now, if the Minister of Home Affairs keeps quiet and behaves like nothing has happened, then all it says is that the government supports that in custody. All it says is the government supports that in custody. Uh, and this will further diminish the worsening public perception of the police in the country and the government in power. And I think what needs to be pointed out is you cannot act with impunity. You have killed somebody, and you must be held accountable for that. Any questions? Uh, uh, I think it's the website as well. So I come. This is a full page post. Well. But it's publicly available now. I think all, all your papers had a story on the phone. Okay.